Namaste and welcome to week three of our spring term 2021. So today we're going to uh, be doing a, pro a practice that's all about our relationship with gravity. So surrendering to gravity and resisting gravity and we will uh, explore this together which would be great. But because we're focusing this term on our uh, building and developing and cultivating a healthy mindset. Today, I would like you to keep in mind this phrase. And I have to look. The things that we think are beliefs, not facts. So those conversations we have with ourselves where we say, I can't, I could never, I'm bad at, I am, and then an, and something that's not very helpful or something that's not very kind. Those are the things that we think, they're beliefs, they're not facts. Um, so just bear that in mind for today. Um, and I'd like that to sort of percolate through your uh, mental stuff, your mind matter, uh, while we do our physical practice. Okay. So let us start with the feet a little gentle distance apart, a gentle, no, a, a widish distance apart, soft in the knees, and we'll twist a little side to side. So we've just been talking in our group before class started um, about uh, tender low back issues. So if you do have a tender low back, a gentle practice of yoga is very nice to release it, a little bit of movement, but not pressing to the point where you feel discomfort increase or any sense of increased pain. So bearing that in mind during this class, drawing your abdominal muscles inwards and upwards, just gaining that gentle control across the abdomen to support the movement that you're making. Allow the shoulders, arms and fingers all to be soft, heavy, relaxed. Allow your head to follow your movement as opposed to leading the movement as the head often does. And as you press into your feet, feel the difference in the sensation across the feet as you twist, the difference in the sensation across the legs, maybe the difference in the softness of the knees as you twist, the hips, the activation of the buttock muscles, and if you're able to do that with your eyes closed or gazing gently downward, you'll find that your awareness of your internal sensations is improved with the focus turned inwards rather than outwards to what you can see. And then we'll begin to pivot on our toes, which you don't have to do with your eyes closed. Uh, certainly to the transition. And feel the difference, feel the difference in what moves here. Maybe touching your opposite shoulder in front of you, your opposite hip behind you, allow the arms to swing away from the body a little bit more uh, fully. Perhaps you can feel that sense of blood being drawn into the fingertips by that centrifugal action. I may have my science completely wrong there, but let's say uh, a little A-level physics has given that to me. <laughs> and then we're going to let the pivot of the toes stop so that our feet come to steadiness. And then we're going to allow the whole body to come back to steadiness and stillness a little at a time. When you do, bringing your feet just a little bit closer together, standing tall and allowing that sense of connection down with the feet and a lift with the crown of the head. See if you can feel the body both surrendering to gravity and resisting gravity at the same time. So we want to allow our bodies to stand upright without force or holding or gripping any particular area. See if you can come to that sort of soft, long and strong position. 
take your hands onto your abdomen. And we're going to breathe gently here for a few moments. So with the eyes gently closed, if you want to, the shoulders relax, taking a few normal, breath, normal breaths to begin with. Notice where you feel the breath begin to move on your inhalation, which part of the body responds first. And where you feel the last of the breath move at the end of your exhalation, which part of the body moves last with your breath. And sensing this, it might help to develop a deeper breath. So if that's useful for you, developing a deeper breath now. Just one more breath here. And then you can gently blink your eyes open. We're gonna relax our arms so that they're nice and soft and heavy by our sides and soften the knees just a touch. So we don't want to lock the legs straight. And sometimes when we're standing, focusing on something else, we tend to lock out our knees so that we can hang on our joints without real effort. So a little softness in the knees. You can turn your toes out a little if you like to. And then chin towards the chest, just feeling the weight of the head surrender to gravity. So not forcing the head down, just releasing the weight of the head forward. Where the back of the body is also resisting gravity. And then from here, if you want to, you can roll your right ear to your right shoulder and then chin back to the center, left ear to the left shoulder. Or if you prefer to move your neck in a different way, particularly you guys who are live here in the class because you're all experienced yogis, if you have a different way of moving your neck that's more useful for you, you explore that way. So I'm gonna go side to side here and then Maybe after one or two more, I can join my ears, my shoulders rather, by lifting my chin, making more of a circular motion. So not taking the head backwards, but as I come with my right ear to my right shoulder, resisting gravity to lift the chin up and over to the left shoulder and in the opposite direction as well. And one more movement before coming back to center, lifting the head, maybe just turning the head, the nose from side to side a couple of times to feel uh, that you can release any tension from the back of the neck. And then we're going to make shoulder circles. So rolling the shoulders, the arms are still heavy and loose by the sides of the body. Rolling the shoulders, doesn't matter which way you're going, but reversing the motion, so opposite way as well. And perhaps here we can tune into that sense of resistance and surrender. So resisting the, the gravity as we bring the shoulders up and surrendering as the shoulders come down. When you're ready, you can leave your right hand on the right hip or the right side of the body, soften the left elbow and make bigger circles with the left arm. So again, resisting gravity, surrendering to gravity. Always. Today, we're just focusing on that relationship. We can focus on anything when we come to the mat and build a practice around it. Let's go in the opposite direction as well. But that's what we're focusing on today. Lovely job. And then resting the left arm and doing the same on the right side. Just notice how the two sides feel and then softening the right elbow and moving.
moving the arm around in a circle. And it's okay to feel the rest of your body move with the movement. And if you want to, you can develop that movement to become a little bigger. Reversing the motion, resisting gravity, surrendering to gravity. And finding space in the body as well. We did mostly finding space the last few weeks, but you might still notice. One more in this direction. Resting the arms down by the sides and just giving the hands a bit of a shake and then rolling the wrists a little, just a few times in each direction. Fantastic stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna turn a little sideways so you can see. We're going to do our standing spinal undulations. So the feet are a comfortable distance apart, the knees are nice and soft. As you breathe in, we're going to take the elbows wide and open the chest, looking slightly up, maybe the elbows come back behind the body slightly. And as you exhale, rounding through the spine, draping the body forward, but as if you're resisting gravity with your heart. So the back of your heart is still lifted up towards the ceiling. So we're not folding forward, we're draping forward. Inhaling, keeping strong in the center, opening the chest, looking up and exhaling, rounding just through the upper body, a little bit through the low back if you want to. Breathing in and breathing out. The sense of draping, surrendering, but resisting in the center. Breathing in and breathing out. Let's do one more. Breathing in and breathing out. Lovely job. Breathing in to stand tall, stretch the arms wide, and then as you breathe out, float your arms down to your side. Make any shoulder mo movements that help. We're gonna take the feet a little bit wider apart, hands onto the hips, toes can point a bit out if you'd like to, and with the knees soft, we'll make some circles with our hips. Circling the hips in one direction, and noticing if, like me, you've got uh, your torso working in the action as well, that's great. Let's do a little bit more in this direction. Maybe moving the torso a little bit more fully if that feels good to you today. And we'll go the opposite way as well. Moving quite a lot of the body. That sense of resisting and surrendering to gravity, <laughs> not to the temptation of chocolate, <laughs> although it might be. Okay, and then coming up to standing, just taking a moment to allow everything to settle after that practice. Deep breath in, maybe sighing out through the mouth. As we stir up some energy, it's good to give ourselves an opportunity to let go of anything that comes up. And then the same thing, but this time keeping your head centered, your feet centered, try to move your hips around with, with the head and the shoulders being pretty passive in this movement. Lovely job. So hip circles, hands on the hips, shoulders pretty passive. Let's go in the opposite direction as well. And you can feel a difference here in the way that the body is in its relationship with gravity as well. smashing, coming back to center. And we're just going to give our legs a little bit of a shake out, arms a little bit of a shake out if we need to. And then taking your feet as uh, wide apart as feels comfortable for you, we're going to come down into a squatted position. So the feet turned out, particularly if that works for you, we're gonna bring the hands to namaste and then just uh, gently coming down, so bending the knees to come down into a standing squat, but quite low down, malasana, if you are familiar with the Sanskrit term. And it doesn't matter here if you want to take your hands to the floor and lift your hips a little or be up on your tiptoes, that's all fine. Ooh. But if you can spend a few moments here at the bottom and just weigh, uh, wiggle yourself from side to side. So pressing off one foot and then the other, giving the hips a little bit of a wiggle. And 
then when you're ready, you can take your hands behind you and simply lower your bottom to the floor and cross your legs with the right foot in front of the left foot. And as we come into this seated position, we're again going to find that uh, process of organizing our bodies upright, resisting gravity with the upper body and surrendering to gravity with the lower body. Maybe surrendering to gravity with the backs of the hands resting on the, the thighs or the knees. Surrendering the weight of the feet, the legs, if you've adopted a different cross leg position, the sit bones down into the mat. Feeling the resistance in the torso, the shoulders, the crown of the head, and without gripping, so letting go of any really grippy sensation or holding sensation in the abdomen. If you feel able, you can close your eyes. If you prefer not to, just gazing downward for a long, deep breath in. And a long, deep breath out. And then when you're ready, you can open your eyes. So we have been using our forward and backward, uh, almost like seated cat poses in this position for a few weeks. But for those who are not familiar, I'm just going to turn ever so slightly sideways. So with your hands resting on your knees, we're going to begin by lifting the chest, little firmness in the belly here, drawing the chest forward, opening that space underneath the chin by lifting the chin ever so slightly. And as you inhale, pressing into the hands, rounding through the spine, tucking the chin to the chest and rolling upright, maybe just slightly further back from your hips. Inhaling as you come forward, leading with the chin and the chest, rounding through the spine, drawing the belly muscles in and rolling as you exhale up to center. Inhaling forward. And exhaling, rounding up. One more in this direction, inhaling forward, exhaling, rounding up. Come back to a center position. We we'll do the same thing the opposite direction. So inhaling as you drop your chin to your chest, round through your spine, and then it's the crown of the head that comes forward between the legs. And then exhaling as you lift in the chest and open more into an upright position. So inhaling, dropping the chin to the chest, diving the crown of the head forward. Exhaling as you lift, opening the chest. Inhaling, two more in this direction, diving the crown of the head forward. Exhaling as you lift. Inhaling forward. Exhaling, pressing into the hands a little to lift. Very good, excellent. So from here, uh, we've done our spinal undulations in this direct in this position. You can feel the difference in how your hips and legs respond to that. And we're going to do a little gentle uh, side bending. So taking your right hand to your right side, take it far away from you and let your left hip come off the floor as you reach your left arm over to the right side. And then press off the right hand, take the left hand out to the left side, take the right hip off the floor as you reach your right hand over to the left side. So we're going from side to side. We've done this a few times, but we're going to feel the resistance of gravity as we push away from the floor and the surrender to gravity as we come to the opposite side. Resist gravity as we push away from the floor and surrender on the other side. Okay, allowing your hips to be completely free to move with your movement if they want to, because we don't want to hold the pelvis rigid. We want the body to respond to the movement that we're making. A little, a few more to either side. I really enjoy this. It's one of the loveliest things to do for your behind, your uh, buttock muscles. Nice little massage. We'll do this one to the right. And then this time, as you go to the left, we're just gonna hold there and then free the right leg and take the right knee to where the right left foot is and point the right foot behind us. So we come into deer pose. So 
particularly for Pauline, your left leg stays where it was in cross legs. Your right leg is out to your side with the foot behind you, still bent, uh, like mermaid twist pose. Very good. And here, we're just gently going to fold ourselves a little bit forward over our front leg and uh, wave our bodies or sway our upper bodies from side to side. So we're going to resist gravity in the middle and surrender on one side of the left leg, resist gravity in the middle as we press away from the floor and surrender on the opposite, opposite side of the left leg. Imagine you're scratching the center of your back on something behind you as you gently sway from side to side. Very good. And then if you want to, you can fold a little bit further forward. For some people that might suit you and for others it might not. And if you do fold further forward, just allowing the back of your neck to be long. Um, you can come all the way down to the floor if you want to, if that's useful for you. Taking a couple of deep breaths here, you might find that that extra uh, length across the buttock and the low back on the left side is useful. And then coming up, uh, paddling the hands back towards you to come up to center, we're gently going to twist to the left. So upright now, taking the right hand to the outside of the left thigh and the left hand slightly behind us and just feeling that uh, gentle opening. So uh, anyone with a sensitive low back here wants to be a little bit careful in this twist, uh, just because we want to feel our way into it, make sure that it's a useful motion, use, useful movement. And then coming back to center. So here is where we get uh, friendly with the floor. So I've worn long sleeves today so I can do this. Uh, if you've taken your tops off, you might want them back on. We're going to slide our left hand away from the body to the left so that we can lie down on our left side and then roll our upper back to the floor, but keep our legs in the same position. So we've come down into a reclined twist, sometimes called squashed fly position. And we're just taking a couple of deep breaths here. If you uh, have a sensitive low back at the moment, taking your right knee away from the floor a little might help the back to feel more comfortable here. Or we're all going there in a moment anyway, you can roll your feet to the floor so that your knees are pointing upright and you're just lying on your back. So those of you who are in a twist at the moment, take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. And then we're all going to roll our feet to the floor and our knees upright. So we're lying on our backs with our knees pointed up. Take the elbows to the side of the body, press the upper arms down, press the back of the head gently towards the floor, pressing into the heels, resist gravity with the hips as you peel the hips up off the floor. And here, we're just going to gently release, surrender to gravity as we peel or allow the hips to lower back down. So let's do two more of those. So we're resisting as we peel the hips up, pressing gently down into the back of the neck, firmly down into the shoulders, the elbows, the feet, and then surrendering to gravity as we release the hips down. If it helps, you can turn your toes out one more time, resisting as we lift up, and surrendering as we come down. Very good. So this time we're going to do our hula hooping that we've doing, been doing for a few weeks. So this time, bringing the hips up and we're going to hula hoop the hips a couple of times in each direction or about three or four times in each direction, reversing the direction there. I just love doing this because it feels so good. <laughs> and then coming back to center and rolling all the way down. So from here, we're just going to take a moment to relax the arms, wave the nose from side to side so we release any tension from the back of the neck, and then bring your knees in towards your chest. Holding on to the back of the knees, we're going to rock backwards and forwards through the length of the spine. So if you've come off your mat, you might want to get back onto it. 
And we're rolling from the shoulder blades to the sit bones, balancing on the sit bones each time if you can. Shoulder blades to sit bones. Shoulder blades to sit bones. Very good. And then if you're ready, you can balance at the top. And we're going to take a boat pose here. So anyone, uh, Trish, I'm thinking of you, not a boat pose today. So uh, shins up but knees bent, shoulder blades rolling down, lifting through the crown of the head, the chest, and if you want to, release your arms away from your knees and hold for a deep breath in and a deep breath out. And we're going to catch the knees in and let the feet come to the floor and swivel on our bottoms to sit uh, with cross-legged with the left leg in front of the right leg to do the whole thing again on the opposite side. So taking a moment to sit, allow your spine to organize itself upright, feel the relationships with gravity. The legs are different on this side, so it affects how we feel things surrendering into the floor and how we feel things resisting, particularly in the pelvis. Take a deep breath in and a slow breath out. Let's begin with our spinal undulations, opening your eyes if you wish to. Inhale as you lift the chest and then fold forward over the legs. Exhale as you press into the hands, round through the spine, tucking the chin in, scooping the belly in. Inhale forward. Exhale, rounding through the spine to sit upright. Inhale forward. Exhale, rounding through the spine. Let's do one more in this direction. Inhale, surrender forward. Exhale, resist back to upright. Let's reverse that motion. Inhale as you scoop the belly in, drop the crown of the head forward, rounding through the spine. And then exhale, pressing into the hands, lifting the chest, lifting the chin upright. Inhale, diving the crown of the head down towards the floor, not forcefully. Exhale as you resist away. Inhaling. And exhaling. Last one. Inhaling. And exhaling. Coming up to center and we'll begin our swaying from side to side. So reaching the left hand out away from the left side of the body, let the right buttock come off the floor as you reach the right hand over to the left and then press off the left hand coming up to center and taking the right hand to the right side of the body, reaching the left hand over the left buttock away from the floor, pressing up to resist and surrender as you fall to the opposite side, pressing up to resist, surrender as you fall. So as you go from side to side, feeling the effect of gravity through your body all of the time, what parts are resisting? When are you suspended between the two of surrendering and resisting? Enjoying that new way of working with your body. If you haven't done resisting surrendering before, very good. The next time we go to the right side, we're just going to stay leaned over to the right, free the left leg, swing the left leg out to the side and then come back to center so that the left knee is near the right foot and the left foot is pointing back behind us. We're in mermaid pose or deer pose if you prefer to call it that. We're going to bring ourselves a little bit forward. So leaning slightly forward from our legs, hands nice and wide and just gently swaying the upper body from side to side. So here we're bouncing, almost bouncing, but doing it really gently up in the center and down on the inside of the right leg, up in the center and down towards the outside of the right leg. Or you can prefer to think of it as uh, scratching something between your shoulder blades on your back I don't know why. 
I don't know why, but the teacher that I learned this from always said that. Okay, so we're gently going side to side. It's lovely, lovely feeling across the pelvis. And then if you want to, you can stay in the center and fold yourself a little bit further forward. So um, we can drape ourselves more towards the floor or lengthen ourselves more towards the floor. And some of you may even prefer to reach your hands much further away from you and take your forehead to the floor if that feels useful to you. Particularly if you are really strong in the buttocks, that might help to uh, stretch out there a little. Or if you are doing yoga on a really regular basis, I'm thinking perhaps of Claire here in class, um, who might need just a little bit more length. But do it if it's useful. Don't do it if it isn't. Taking a deep breath in and a deep breath out. And we're going to pad our hands back towards us, come up to sitting. So we're in the center and then drawing the left arm across the body to the outside of the right thigh and the right arm behind you. Just Spend a moment to resist upright, and then if you want to twist, you can twist a little bit deeper. But you don't have to, you can do a very gentle twist here. A deep breath in. And a slow, soft breath out. When you're ready, returning your head to the center, unwinding your spine a little. And we're going to fall towards the floor on the right side. So from this position of the legs, reaching the right arm out along the floor to the right side. When the right side of the body comes down to the floor, rolling onto your back. So your legs remain uh, in the same position, but the arms are released away from the body. The upper back released to the floor, the back of the head on the floor. So if you don't want to hold this twist, you can come up into uh, the half supine position. So with the constructive rest, sometimes it's called, the knees bent, the feet on the floor. But if you are happy in your twist, just taking another deep breath in and a slow breath out. Then we're all going to come, uh, bring our knees up to the center and our feet to the floor so that we're in our reclining supine position, elbows down by the sides of the body. And here, if you want to, you can bring your heels a little bit closer towards your buttocks if you'd like to, pressing gently down with the back of the head firmly down with the elbows, the shoulders, the feet, inhaling the hips up and exhaling, releasing the hips back down again. Resisting gravity as you lift the hips up from the floor, surrendering to gravity as you release down. It's not about the shape that you make, it's about how it feels. So feel that resistance as you begin to peel up, feel what needs to be strong to allow you to resist and surrender as you release down. This time coming up for our hula hoops. So lifting the hips, keeping that firmness in the back of the elbows and the feet and just hula hooping your hips to one side or in one direction and then in the opposite direction as well. Very good. And then we're going to release the hips back down to the floor and gather our knees in towards us, holding around the backs of the knees or on top of the knees if you prefer. And we're just going to gently roll backwards and forwards from the shoulder blades to the sit bones, trying to catch ourselves suspended against that resistance and surrender at the top of our movement before Surrendering back down. Ooh. Let's do one more and then we'll meet in our balance position. And here, if you'd like to add a little boat pose, you can bring your shins up, keep your knees bent. You can hold on to the backs of the legs if you want to. Lengthen through the crown of your head and your spine. Release your arms away if you want to. You can take your legs long if you prefer as well. Deep breath in, deep breath out, and then catch your knees, gather everything in, and return to sitting with the right foot in front of the left. Let's take a moment. Let go of anything that's come up by sighing out through your mouth. 
Allow the spine to organize itself upright. Allow the nervous system to absorb the information, the muscular system, the fascial system to respond to the movement that you've made. Give yourself a moment. Relax your face, relax your jaw. Swallow to relax your tongue if you need to. Then when you're ready, we'll do that again, but we're gonna add a few different things to it this time. Okay, so we're just going to do two spinal undulations in each way. So hands onto the knees, inhale as you lift the chest and fold forward over the legs. Exhale, press into the hands, round through the spine to come up to sitting, inhaling forward. Exhaling, rounding to sitting. Opposite way, inhale round and dive the crown of the head forward. Exhale, press into the hands, open the chest, open the space under the throat. Inhaling, rounding, diving the crown of the head forward. Exhaling, resisting, pressing into the hands to come upright. This time, we're going to take our right hand down to our right side and we're going to fold over onto our right arm. Yes, so we're in our side bend. And then when we come up, we're going to take the left hand to the left side and then round. Instead, we're doing the hugging motion. So we're rounding uh, forward over our left leg a little as if we were hugging something on our left thigh or left knee. Coming back upright, we're going to fold to the right side, left buttock lifts, left arm folds over as well. Resisting as we come up, and then hugging around the left side. So it's as if we're hugging a tree that grows out of our leg, coming back to center. Folding to the right, coming up and rounding to the left, scooping the belly in, rounding the right arm in front of us as well. So we get that length across the right side of the upper back, coming up. To center, folding to the right, coming up to center and rounding to the left side. Let's do two more. I can't remember how many we've done, but we'll call it two more. Lovely job. And then, hold on, I can't remember how many we've done. There we are. <laughs> I need to stop talking. There we are. This time we're going to fold to the right and keep going and take the left leg out and swing it to the left side so we can come up to sitting um, in our deer pose. Fantastic stuff. Okay, so here in our deer pose, we're going to also fold forward as we've done before, finding our way, negotiating our way down. And for those who would like to, they can slide their left leg around behind them and come into pigeon pose. But if you want to stick with deer pose, which I do today, um, then you can do that as well. So we'll take a few moments here in our deer pose with the elbows out in front if you want to fold a little further down. If you want to simply keep negotiating from side to side, then you can do that as well. And if you prefer to rest in, uh, pigeon pose you can take your back leg back behind you your left leg sorry back behind you a little let's all take a deep breath in wherever we are and a deep breath out those of you in pigeon bringing your left leg back to your left side and we're going to slide our right arm out away from us and lie down on the right side reaching the left arm over to come into this spinal twist so for anyone who doesn't want to do the twist, returning the knees upright, the feet to the floor. And for anyone who's enjoying this twist, you might like to rest your right foot on top of your left thigh and reach your left arm over your head to feel that slight increase of length here. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Uncrossing the legs, returning the left arm to the left side. We're going all going to bring our knees upright and take a moment to rest the arms down by the sides. 
when you're ready. We're going to use our arms this time with our bridge pose as well. So first pressing the arms down, pressing into the heels, a gentle press of the back of the head down. Inhale as you lift the hips up. And then exhale, keep the hips lifted and reach the arms up over your head. Inhale in this extended bridge pose and exhale only the hips down to the floor. Inhaling the hips up again. Exhale at the top of your movement, press down into your feet, down into the backs of the arms. Inhale once more at the top and then exhale all the way down. One more time, inhaling the hips up. At the top of the moment, exhale, release your arms back down to your side. Inhale, leave the hips up and then exhale as you bring the hips all the way down. Very good. We're going to bend our knees into our chest, hug them towards us. And here with the knees nice and apart, make rolling circles with your knees. So circles in opposite directions, just to give you a little bit of a uh, massage on the low back, you can go in both directions. Smashing stuff. And then we'll come back to center, we'll roll through the spine again. So I'm just gonna shift back onto my mat a little bit. We're rolling backwards and forwards here. And this time at the top of the movement, I would like you to strike a different pose every time as you balance on your sit bones. So rolling back, coming up, rolling back, coming up, rolling back, coming up. <laughs> and last one, coming up and balancing. Doesn't matter where it is. Wonderful stuff. And then this time we're going to release our feet down to the floor and sit in Dandasana. So uh, relaxing our legs to be a little bit longer. They don't have to be absolutely straight in front of us, a little bit longer, toes pointing upright. We're keeping our feet quite wide apart and we're going to sit um, in the center of our sit bones with our crown, the crown of the head resisting gravity, raising ourselves upwards. So we're in Dandasana, but as I said, a little softness in the back of the knees if you'd like to. We're going to do, I'd like you to watch uh, this first one, okay? So to begin with, we're going to raise our arms up and open the chest as we sit in Dandasana, a little bit of support across the belly here. And then we're going to release our arms out to the side and imagine that we're being drawn backwards by the center of the back as we reach our hands and heads forwards. So we're resisting uh, the pull of gravity as we almost try to lengthen our hands towards our feet. Here we'll breathe in, and as we breathe out, we're going to surrender to that gravity and fold forward towards the legs. We'll breathe in again here and out. And then breathe in as we lift our heads and chests. And once they've lifted and the back is long, lifting the arms to come back to sitting in Dandasana with the arms over the head. And we'll come back and do the same thing again. Okay, so starting in your Dandasana position, your knees, as I say, can be as soft as needed. Raising the arms up over the head, looking up, feeling that lift down the sides of the body, underneath the uh, ribcage and into the belly muscles. Release the arms out to the sides and imagine you're reaching forward to reach someone's hands in front of you. But at the same time, someone's dragging you back from your navel or your, your mid spine, chin towards your chest. Deep breath in here. As you exhale, soften into that uh, Resistance, so the surrender of gravity and fold forward over the legs. Deep breath in and out. Inhale as you look forward, lift the head, lift the chest, then lift the arms, pressing into the heels to come upright. Exhale the arms down to the side. Inhale as you resist the gravity, reaching the hands forward, reaching the spine backwards. Exhale as you fold. Deep breath in, deep breath out. 
Inhale, look forward, lift the head, lift the chest, lift the arms last, reaching up. Exhale, arms out to the side. Inhale, reaching the hands forward, the spine backwards, chin towards the chest. Exhale as you resist and fold. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Inhale, head, chest, arms up. Exhale, arms out to the side. Inhale as you reach the hands forward, the rounding through the spine. Exhale as you resist and fold, and we're going to hold here. So it doesn't matter how far into this position you are, that's not what it's about. I want you to find a place that's comfortable. Support your, your body with your hands if you like. Bend your knees a lot deeper if you like. If you're comfortable in this position, you can easily reach your feet. Take your first and second fingers between your big toe and the other toes. Wrap them around your big toe and put your thumbs on top. There's a special mudra for this posture. And then we're just going to paddle through the leg. So bending one knee a little bit more and then straightening the opposite leg. Like you're paddling through your down dog and let your body sway a bit from side to side if that feels comfortable. If you feel comfortable, you can let your head sway a little bit from side to side as well. So we're finding where we've got some space in the body. And if you would like to, you can develop your Paschimottanasana, this posture a little bit further by breathing in and lengthening through the, the back of the body or the and lifting in the belly and breathing out as you fold. You don't have to do more than you're doing now. This is not our only chance to do this posture today. And then after your next deep breath out, we're going to press into the hands a little, roll the shoulder blades down, lift the chest, lift the head, lift the arms up, and exhale the arms down to the sides. Excellent. Okay, so I'm going to try and teach you this next bit, <laughs> um, but it, it requires a little bit of doing. So for this next bit, uh, just watching, from this Paschimottanasana uh, position, we're going to reach the left arm to the left side, fall a, a little to the left, reach the right leg up and over, bend the knees as we roll on the back to the other end of the mat and come up to sitting in deer pose. And as you come up, twisting to the left side. Yes, good job. And then we go back the opposite way. So we reach the right arm down, swinging the left leg over, both legs straight, using any means necessary to sit back up to Paschimottanasana. For anyone who doesn't want to do this rolling around on the floor bit <laughs> um, because they don't have the space, just take a moment to sit cross-legged and you can join us in deer pose in just a minute, okay? So those of you who are rolling, left hand, no, that's not right, it's right hand to the floor. Right hand to the floor, left leg up and over, coming upright so that you've got yourself in deer pose and you turn to the right, reaching the left arm across and then back to center, left arm down to the floor, one leg straight, then the other, we spin and come up to Dandasana, we're reaching the arms over the head. Right arm down to the floor, swing the left leg up and over, use the hands if you need to, to come up into deer pose, reach your left hand across the body, so you've got this reaching fold, and then left arm down to the floor, swinging the legs. Woo -hoo -hoo. It's ever so graceful. <laughs> Not. And coming into Paschimottanasana. This time, we're going to meet up in our deer pose. And so for those of you who didn't join in this practice, that's okay. Come back to deer pose. You've got the left leg in front of you and the right leg out to your right side and behind you. And we're going to reach the left hand over to that right side as if we were being drawn back by the center of the back. So we're twisting, there's a slight rounding in the back as well. From here, from this twisted position, we're going to come back to sitting in the center, reach the left hand behind us, press down into the left hand, lift the hips away from the floor so you're on your shins and reach the right hand over the body into your baby. Uh, wild thing. 
and then coming back to the center, sitting upright, and then reaching the left hand across to the right side of the body, rounding as you slightly twist, slightly fold. Coming back to center, left hand behind the body, lifting the hips away from the floor as you sweep the right arm up and over, and then releasing the hips back to the floor, turning to the right side, reaching the left hand across. So let's do this a couple more times. We're gonna reach the left hand behind us. We want to press down. So we're surrendering to gravity with the tops of the feet, the left hand, we're resisting gravity with the hips and the right arm and the chest. And then we're gonna surrender the hips down and reach the left hand to the right side of the body in a twist. Last one, reaching behind us, lifting the hips up, opening the right arm, opening the chest, coming back to center, and then coming into your twist. Coming back to center here, I'm at one long end of my mat, but I started in the middle. So I'm going to lean slightly backwards, bring my feet onto the floor, and then I'm going to sit crossing the left leg in front of the right leg in the center. It might be, so I always, when I'm facing you guys, I always try to mirror you. So I use my right side and say my left because it matches you if you were looking in a mirror. Um, so if it takes you a little bit of a shuffle to get back there, do not worry. Okay, so in the center, taking a moment to sit tall, relax the shoulders, relax the face, relax the jaw. Allow the spine to organize itself. Allow your nervous system, your muscles, your fascia to absorb the information you've given them. Find a little stillness. If you need to take a deep breath in, sigh out through your mouth. We'll do the whole thing to the other side. So hands onto the knees, sitting tall. Inhale as you fold forward, opening the chin, opening the chest. Exhale, round through the back, press into the hands to sit upright. Inhaling one more time in this direction as you fold. Exhaling, rounding through the back, rounding through the chest. Same thing in the opposite direction. Inhale as you round and dive the crown of the head forward. Exhale as you press into the hands, open the chest, open the chin. Inhaling as you round and dive the crown of the head forwards. Exhaling as you round through the chest. Uh, sorry, open the chest and open the chin. <laughs> Coming back to center. So this time we're going to come into our side bends. So we reach the left hand to the left side, the right hip comes off the floor, the right arm comes over, and then pressing off the left hand, instead of going to the right, we round the left arm around, almost like we're uh, rounding around a tree growing out of our right thigh. And then we come back up and fall to the left side again. So falling into that side bend, resist away from the floor, coming upright and then rounding over to the right side. So we, re we surrender and fall to the left. We resist away and then we round as we slightly turn to the right and back to center. We'll do three more. Pressing off your left hand to return and then feeling like someone's dragging the center of your back backwards as you round around your right leg. Two more. Very nice. Notice if it's different on this side, it doesn't matter if it is. Excellent stuff. And this time we're going to lean to the left. Oh no, this time we're going to lean to the right. What have I done? Yes, no. And take the right leg back behind us. 
I'm feeling like I've got my legs muddled up on this side. Yes. So we need to do it the opposite way around on this side. <laughs> so make sure that you've got your left knee in front of you and your right leg out to the side for your deer pose. I don't know how I've got myself muddled, but I have. Not at all a problem. We're going to lean slightly forward and we're going to sway ourselves down. If you feel like you did it the other way around, it's OK to swap on this side. That's the important thing. So if you want to here, you can do your pigeon pose by sliding your right leg back behind you a little bit more. Um, and if, uh, if that feels good to you, you can do pigeon on this side. If you prefer to stick with uh, deer pose, which I'm going to do today, um, that's quite nice for anyone who finds pigeon a little bit too intense at times. We can fold forward over our front legs uh, if that feels good, regardless of whether you're in pigeon or deer pose. Or you can keep it much more mobile and be much higher up, simply holding at the top if you prefer. So whatever suits you on this side. Very good. We're going to, to take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Those in pigeon bringing their right knee back towards their left leg. And then everyone in the upright position, we're going to reach our left hand out to the left side, fold down on our left side and open the right arm out behind us. So we're in our twist. If you don't want to hold the twist, come up with the knees, leaving the feet on the floor. If you're holding your twist, perhaps resting your left foot on top of your right thigh. And taking a couple of deep breaths here. Then when you're ready, you can uncross your legs and everybody's going to bring their knees upright. So we're in a, a half supine position. We're going to bring the feet a little bit closer to the buttocks, perhaps on this side, and the arms down by the sides. As you inhale, press down into the back of the head, firmly into the shoulders and arms, the heels, and lift your hips up. As you exhale, reach your arms up over your head so that they come to rest on the floor. Inhale again at the top of this movement and exhale just the hips down to the floor. Inhale, resisting gravity as you lift the hips, pressing down with the backs of the arms, the shoulders, the heels. Inhale at the top, oh, exhale at the top. Inhale again. And exhale all the way down. One more time. Inhaling the hips up. This time, exhale the arms back down to the sides. Inhale, press down with the arms. And exhale, release the hips down to the floor. Very good. I'm just going to shuffle myself back onto my mat. You may prefer to do the same. And we're going to gather our knees in towards us and make big circles with the knees, holding on to the knees, behind the knees or on top of the knees, just letting the knees go in, a, in different directions. And if you're doing that, reversing the motion as well to massage out a little bit at the low back. Then we're going to bring the knees into the chest. We're going to begin rocking backwards and forwards through the length of the spine. So rocking from shoulder blades to sit bones, Give yourself a couple of goes to get your momentum and then strike a pose at the top of your movement. Strike a pose as you sit on your sit bones. Strike a pose as you balance. And when you're ready, catch yourself. And come into boat pose one last time. So catching yourself underneath the knees, rolling the shoulder blades down, lengthening through the spine, a little lift in the tummy. If you want to, you can extend the legs a little bit longer as well. You don't have to. If you want to, you can let go of the legs to reach the arms out. Deep breath in, deep breath out. We're going to gather up the knees and let the feet come to the floor. Excellent stuff. And we're coming into our Dandasana pose. So feet are apart from each other quite wide. Knees can be nice and soft. 
We're sitting with our legs long in front of us and our spines upright. Here, we're going to do our same uh, resisting and folding. So as we inhale, take the arms out and up, lifting the chest. As you exhale, allow the arms to come down to, the, uh, to reach out to either side of the body. Inhale as you resist by reaching forward as the spine comes backward. So you round forward and then exhale as you surrender, folding forward over the legs. Take a deep breath in, in your flopped position and a deep breath out. Then inhale, lifting your head, lifting your chest, then lifting your arms, pressing into the legs to come upright, lifting the arms, exhale, arms out to the side. Inhale as you reach the hands forward and the back of the spine backwards, chin towards the chest, scoop the belly in, exhale as you surrender and fold. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Inhale, look forward, lift the head, lift the chest, then lift the arms to sit upright. Exhale, the arms out to the side. Inhale, reach the hands forward, reach the center of the back backwards. Resist and surrender as you exhale. Inhale, deep breath in. Deep breath out. Inhale, look forward, lift the head, lift the chest, lift the arms up. Last one, exhale, arms out to the side. Inhale, reach the hands forward, reach the back of the body backwards. Resist and then surrender as you exhale. Inhale. And then we're going to hold here. So we're going to paddle through the backs of the legs, bending one knee a bit more, lengthening the opposite knee a bit more. You can hold your toes if that feels comfortable. You can hold your hands by the side of your body. You don't have to be folded forward very much at all. So whatever works for you, if you feel that you're a little, uh, have a little tightness or stiffness in the back of the body, you can sit in the middle and simply sway your upper body from side to side with your knees really nice and soft here. And that will help to create space to find opportunities for movement. Excellent stuff. And then when you're ready, from here, we're going to do our folding, swinging leg action. Folding, swinging leg action. I'm going to move a little bit further on, forward on my mat to give myself a bit more room. So anyone who doesn't want to do this, come up to sitting and I will give you a different position in a minute. So from this forward fold, reach your, let's say, Left arm out to the left side. Swing your right leg up and over. Come up to sitting right knee in front of left in your deer pose. And then twisting your right arm across the body to the left side, rounding through the spine. So if you don't want to do the rolling around, come into this deer pose and simply sit tall and then do the twist as we roll around on our backs. So from this deer pose, we're going to reach the right arm to the right side, fold to the right, swing the left leg over and then the right straight. So we end up sitting in our Dandasana pose with our legs long and our arms reached over our head. And then folding and surrendering to the left side, reach the left arm out, reach the right leg up and over, bending the knee so you come up to deer pose and then reaching the right arm across to the left side of the body as you sort of, it's like a twist, but instead of being really upright, we're reaching away. We're doing that uh, surrendering, resisting movement. Then reaching the right arm to the right, swing the left leg around, legs are straight this way around, and then come up to Dandasana, reaching the arms up into the air, rolling back, sliding the left arm away from you, right leg up and over, bending the knees and twisting to the left side. One last time. I hope that we've done an even amount on both sides. And then, Coming back, once you get your momentum going with that, it's not so bad. Okay, so here we're going to do our um, baby wild things. So from here, we're in our twist. We've twisted towards the left foot. 
We're rounding a little bit as we reach the right arm towards the left. So the upper body is a little bit rounded, a little bit resisting. And then we're gonna sweep the right hand behind us, lift the hips up, press into the shins and the tops of the feet as we reach the left arm over baby wild thing. Surrender the hips back to the floor, turning through center to the left as we reach the right arm across the body. And then coming back through center, place the right hand down, press into the tops of the feet, into the shins, reach the left arm over, open your chest and surrender back down. I think we will do two or three more of these. So going from one shape to the other, through your center, find those places where you're resisting, find those places where you're surrendering. We're going to do one more for luck. Very good. And then when you come back to deer pose this time, we're going to just uh, sway our feet to the floor and sit this time with our right foot in front of our left. Okay, so coming back to center, allowing yourself to find an upright position, find a surrender in the outside edges of the feet, the legs, the sit bones, the arms, the backs of the hands perhaps, and find that resistance, that lift in the center of the body without gripping or holding or clenching or forcing, allow your body to be upright, your spine to be upright, your neck to be long. Soften the features of your face, closing your eyes if you feel able, taking a few deep breaths. And here, we're just going to spend a moment thinking or bringing to mind a statement from the beginning of the class. The things I think are beliefs, not facts. Can you feel that sometimes you surrender to those beliefs? And perhaps with a little change of perspective, we could instead resist those beliefs and search instead for a truer statement, a truer thought. Something more compassionate, more helpful more believable. Over the course of the next week, try to be a little bit aware of the conversations you have with yourself. See if you can resist the temptation to believe your thoughts as facts. Resist the temptation to surrender to those unkind statements that we make in our own heads. And where possible, try to find something kinder to say. Some compassion for yourself. When you're ready, you can blink your eyes open and prepare for relaxation. So uh, coming onto your 
back for relaxation today. If you've got a handy blanket somewhere, it might be useful to have one for our relaxation. Whenever you're ready, you can come down onto your back. But for now, we do want to be able to put our uh, knees into our chest a little bit. So here, as you lie down on your back, with your knees just resting towards you, let your arms relax out to the side and just gently sway your, knee, your nose from side to side. Little one way and then the other. And see if you can release some tension from the back of the body, if you have it there. I always seem to have a little tension there, so that's why I do it a lot. And then when you're ready, you can uh, scoop your hands underneath the knees and make any stirring movements or knee circling movements that feel good to, to iron out, again, any effort, any tension you've got left in the back of the body. When you're ready, you can float your feet down, keep your feet wide. And with the arms relaxed away from the body, simply swaying your knees from one side to the other, just a few times in each direction. If you have a handy block here, you could try a supported bridge pose. But um, I'm not going to teach that today, but that would be a really nice thing to uh, add here if you happen to have a block when you're doing this on the video later. So knees swaying from side to side. They don't have to go far, but if you want to, you can begin to allow the legs to really surrender to gravity and maybe take a deep breath in and a deep breath out, and then sway the knees to the opposite side, surrender them to gravity, deep breath in, deep breath out. Maybe one or two more times to each side, depending on how fast or slow your breathing is. Remembering you can always uh, sigh out through your mouth. anytime you need to. We're going to come back to the center whenever you're ready, bending the knees in and then straightening the legs up towards the ceiling. They don't have to point towards the ceiling and they, the knees can be as bent as you like. Reach your arms up as well, and just rolling your feet at the ankles, your hands at the wrists a couple of times in each direction. And then from here, we're just gently going to sway a little bit on our backs. So you can leave your head to roll on the floor, just reaching the left arm and leg up a bit, and then the right arm and leg up a bit as you sway from side to side. A little more massaging across the, maybe the center of the back and the space between the shoulder blades. And then we're going to take the hands to the inner thighs and just separate the legs a comfortable distance. And it doesn't have to be far because we're winding down. It's not about uh, being as stretchy as you can be. It's just a comfortable distance. And then here again, rocking a little bit from side to side. And your knees can be as bent as they need to be to be in a comfortable position for your legs. And then in your center, sliding your hands to the outside of the thighs, pressing the legs towards each other, allowing the legs to flop, the feet to flop towards the buttocks, and just holding the knees towards the chest for a deep breath in or two, and sighing out through the mouth. And when you're ready, you can let your feet come to the floor one at a time. And I suggest today that you relax with your legs long on your mat, because we've done an awful lot with the knees bent as well. So sorting out your blanket, sorry, mine's always a bit of a footer, lengthening the legs out and having your feet wide and the toes pointed out, to, uh, turned out to the side. So the, the, the sides of the feet are surrendering down towards the floor, which opens the space on the inner groins 
the inner knees, feel the weight of the buttocks on the floor, allow the back of the pelvis to soften and release. Allow your blanket to keep you really cozy. And if you can, turning your palms upwards and releasing your arms away from your body. If for any reason that doesn't feel comfortable, so for some people, if you've got a shoulder trauma or a neck trauma, you might not feel so comfy like that. And finding a position that is comfortable for you or resting your hands onto your abdomen if you prefer. Making any last adjustments to your posture, to your position. And bringing your body to stillness. Take a deep breath in, sigh out through the mouth. <sighs> Repeat that up to three more times. A deep breath in. Let all of the effort of your practice go. <sighs> A deep breath in. Let your muscles begin to relax. Our last breath in and surrender down into your mat. Allow your breath to find its natural, spontaneous rhythm and fall away into silence. Take your awareness into your forehead, feel it soften and spread. Feel the area around your eyes relaxing, your mouth, tongue, jaw releasing. Move your awareness to the back of your body. Allow the whole of the back of the body to feel heavy, warm, supported, releasing down. Move your awareness to the front of your body. Feel space over you and around you. the movement of your clothes on your skin as you breathe. The weight and the warmth of the blanket over you. The sensation of holding space in the palms of the hands. Bring your awareness to your breathing. Notice the breath that you're breathing right now. Notice where your inhalation starts in the body, where it moves the body first. Notice the last part of the body to surrender as you finish your exhalation. Allow your body to release, surrender, soften and relax a little deeper 
with every exhalation. Gently begin to deepen your breath. Bring your awareness back into your hands and your feet by wiggling your fingers and toes. Maybe rolling your feet at the ankles, rolling the hands at the wrists. When you feel ready, take a deep breath in, stretch through the body, stretch anything that feels good, maybe yawn, just stretch your fingers. When you're ready, gather your knees in towards you and make any movements that feel good with your body, with your back rather, or good to your body. And then when you're ready, you can roll to one side and just spend a moment curled up on your side. There's no hurry to get here. There's no hurry to move from here. in your own time. Find your way to any comfortable seated position. See if you can keep your eyes closed at the moment. When you're sitting upright, taking one hand over your heart, the other hand on top. Take a moment to remember the way that we talk to other people is often far kinder than the things we say to ourselves. So this week, remembering compassion, not just to others, but to ourselves.
And when you're ready, gently opening your eyes. Namaste, gorgeous yogis and yoginis. Thank you for joining me for this practice. I hope to see you at another one sometime soon.